Jacob had an emptiness that he was trying to fill. And I think many of us can relate to that. Many of us have grown up with feelings of rejection, which have often led to us to to fight and to strive to find acceptance and to find our identity in all of the wrong things. This Torah portion, along with really the next two Torah portions, are all about Jacob. Jacob's life, his character development, and what we learn from that. And Jacob, as we discover, he lived a life of constant struggle, didn't he? He lived a life of constant struggle. In fact, even while he was still in his mother's womb, it says that he struggled with his twin brother Esau. Genesis 25:22 says that the children struggled within Rebekah while she was pregnant. And as we continue in the story, we see that when Jacob was born, he came out holding Esau's heel, which kind of foreshadowed something. It foreshadowed his later desire to be the firstborn child. In fact, the name Jacob, it comes from the Hebrew word for heel, which means to grab the heel. And in Hebrew, there's sort of a negative connotation here with this name. It's like tripping someone from behind or running people over. And that's exactly what we see throughout the early part of Jacob's life. We see that he's just tripping people from behind, right? Of course, we know in this week's Torah portion that Jacob took advantage of his own family, his own brother. Um, He demanded Esau's birthright for a bowl of soup. And say what you want about Esau, there's certainly plenty there to criticize, especially his short-sightedness. But what Jacob did was basically extortion. And don't even get me started on how Jacob stole the blessing by disguising himself as Esau and deceiving his father. And, you know, lots of Bible commentators have gone through all kinds of mental gymnastics to try to justify Jacob's behavior there, but we all know that what he did was wrong. He basically lied to his own father to get what he wanted. So, Jacob struggled and he strived and he manipulated throughout the entire early part of his life. And I want to submit something. I want to submit that Jacob's struggles and his striving are rooted in a deep sense of rejection and insecurity that he had in his soul. He he wanted to be the firstborn child. He had a longing for meaning and significance. He wanted to be valued. And Jacob's yearning to feel accepted and valued, I think, is what drove him to this unhealthy behavior, which ultimately led to him up and his brother wanting to kill him. But where did this longing come from? Where did this longing to be accepted and valued come from? I want to suggest that perhaps, at least in part, it came from Jacob's father, Isaac. What do I mean by that? Well, in Genesis 25, 28, it says this. It says, Isaac loved Esau. Did you catch that? It says, Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. So Isaac loved Esau it would seem that there was parental favoritism at play within this family. Jacob's father preferred Esau to Jacob. And you know, maybe the reason Jacob wanted so badly to be the firstborn is simply that he, like all young boys, like all kids, he longed for the love and affection of his father that he didn't get enough of because his father preferred Esau to him. He might have thought, man, if I could just be more like Esau, maybe my father will love me. And perhaps this played a a small part in Jacob's decision to disguise himself as Esau in order to receive the blessing from his father. If I pretend to be my brother, my father will want to bless me. If I pretend to be my brother, my father will want to bless me. We know psychologically 
that unfavored children typically grow up with a constant need to feel validated, which is ultimately fueled by a deep sense of rejection that they got from their parents. And maybe there's something to be said about that in Jacob's case, I don't know. But whatever it was, it seems clear to me that Jacob had an emptiness that he was trying to fill. Jacob had an emptiness that he was trying to fill, and I think many of us can relate to that. Many of us have grown up with feelings of rejection, which have often led to us to to fight and to strive to find acceptance and to find our identity in all of the wrong things. We think, man, if I could if I could just have that thing, if my circumstances were just a little bit different, if this person loved me the way that I loved them, I can finally be happy. And the tragic thing about all of Jacob's efforts is that while he was able to swindle his brother out of the birthright and he was able to steal the blessing by deceiving his father, he got everything he thought that he wanted It didn't actually help his situation on a personal level, did it? His brother wanted to kill him. He had to leave home. His family broke up. All of his striving and manipulation caused nothing but strife and disorder. And worse, it left Jacob completely unsatisfied. He wasn't satisfied with what he got. He still had to fight and strive even after this. In the same way, I I think for us, we often think that achieving some sort of level of earthly status in life or whatever, it will bring us fulfillment. We, We find our identity in climbing the corporate ladder, obtaining some position of influence in life, or maybe just getting married, getting that job or house that we want, or just having a large social media following. Sometimes we might even use less than honest means to accomplish our goals because we're just so desperate for personal validation. We want to be accepted. We want to be valued. Recently, there was an Instagram model, yes, that's a thing, an Instagram model, who was sentenced to prison. And she was sentenced to prison. Well, well, let me tell the story. Her claim to fame was going on cruises to all of these exotic locations and taking pictures for her Instagram account. And, well, as you can imagine, that could get pretty expensive after a while. So in order to pay for her trips and all of these cruises, she started smuggling cocaine into these various countries. She had an image that she wanted to maintain on Instagram, and so she resorted to having to do this in order to maintain that uh, platform, to maintain that position of influence, that source where she got her personal validation. So many of us are like that. We measure our value by likes and view counts through a glowing screen in a rectangular box we carry around in our pocket. I think much of our striving in life is simply an attempt to find some sort of relief from our pain. But the tragedy of it all is that we are still left unsatisfied even when we finally get what we think that we want. As we learn from Jacob's story, the turning point in his life was not when he successfully stole the blessing. It wasn't when he got married to his true love. It wasn't when he attained great wealth and success in his business. No, the turning point in Jacob's life was when he had a transformative encounter with God. And I'm jumping ahead a couple Torah portions, but we learn through Jacob's life that he found the true source of blessing, the true source of blessing, not in what he stole through deception, manipulation, striving, yearning, for something that he couldn't get from his parents. No, he found the true source of blessing when he allowed God to define his identity. Jacob wrestled with God, and it was declared, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. When Jacob encountered God, he was no longer to be known 
by Jacob. He was no longer to be known by his former reputation of tripping people from behind, of deception. He was no longer to be known for his struggling for personal validation. Jacob longed to be the firstborn of his father Isaac. Jacob's encounter with God made him an accepted and loved firstborn son of his heavenly father. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and Israel is called God's firstborn son in Exodus 4.22. In the same way, for you, looking to God is the only way to satisfy your inner emptiness. Your earthly father might have failed you. He might have, you might not have gotten what you needed from your parents. You might suffer from a desperate need to feel special and validated because you didn't get it from wherever else. I don't know. I don't know your situation, but I'm here to tell you that only in our Heavenly Father's presence will you find true acceptance and healing. God is the only one who truly blesses and who truly gives our life purpose and identity. And it's from that basis that we can be freed from our constant need for personal validation from others. When you allow God to define your identity as his child, he will give you new desires, a hunger and thirst for righteousness, which he promises to satisfy. Thank you guys very much.